All right, you two. What's happening today? Today we're gonna bring you an update on the Honda Guinea. That's the nickname of this Honda Accord Special Edition. We usually nickname all our Accords Honda Guineas. One of the reasons why we do that is because as growing up, we didn't have many opportunities for brand, brand new cars. So most of our used cars were Hondas. Why Hondas, you say? Because everybody who's anybody who's ever driven a Honda, owned a Honda or know a Honda, knows that these cars, when you buy a newer use, for the most part, have a very good reliability factor. There are some exceptions to the rule. Uh, here you have the first thing. Pretty clean engine bay. This model was also available with a V6, so that's why you have so much extra space in the engine bay. It's actually nice because the motor doesn't get so hot because it's in such a small space. Uh, people may, you may be asking why this car? Well, if you're talking about reliability, if you're talking about a no-bringer car, if you're talking about an affordable car, if you're talking about a safe car, if you're talking about a four-door car, if you're talking about a Honda Accord or a Toyota Cam. Now, me personally, I like the Accord more just because I'm a sportier person. I'm a car enthusiast person. I'm a driver. So for me, the, the sportiness of the Hondas and the steering and the suspension is what I go for when I buy a Honda. On this model here, we got these gorgeous 19-inch rims, man. They are just beautiful. I, I wouldn't even think of changing them just because they fit the car so well. I might put some spacers in the back to give it a staggered look just to give it a more muscular stance. But uh, getting back to the nickname Honda Guinea, one of the reasons why we call it a Honda Guinea is because the suspension and the handling usually outweighs any amount of power that that Earth Dreams motor can put down. Um, you have tons of great power amenities, tons. You got the great armrest, so on and so forth. But again, uh, what that what this does is by having a Honda Guinea like this, this allows me to uh, kind of rip into the Durango and uh, do some of the power adders and things that I want to do. And at the same time, still have a everyday, safe, reliable car. You look back there, I got the Vaccaro car seat for my baby girl. You know, it's a amazing no brainer vehicle. If you're in the market and you don't know really what to buy out there, it's your first time car or whatever, a Honda Accord, you, you just can't go wrong, man. You know, unless you buy one that's really beat to crap and somebody, you know, chopped it up and thought it was a weekend race car, you know, they're, you know, they're infallible, man. These cars run, they run good. Every Honda I've had, I've had, I've had, and two 87s, a carbureted and an LXI fuel injected. I had an 89 that was a five-speed coupe LXI. Uh, we had a 93. We had a 94, which was the new spaceship body style. And those had a little funny thing with the transmission, but we had one of those. Uh, just trying to think. My brother had, I believe it was like a 08 or 09 Accord Coupe four-cylinder. Uh, another family member used to have a V6, like a 2001 V6. So these cars have been in and out of my family and in and out of my life, my whole life. And one thing that has always come through is an, a Honda gets you there, man. It does what it does. You know what I mean? And all of my Accords that I got, they all saw 200,000 miles before I sold them to somebody else for money and they so on and so forth. So if you're looking to get started in the car game, you're looking to build your credit, you're looking for a car that uh, is going to get you there and do what you got to do, you can't do much better than a Honda Accord. And I mean, don't take my word for it. Just go out there and ask people when you see them with an Accord. Ask them if they love it. Ask them what they love about it. And one of the main things that most people love about a Honda Accord is just about every time you stick the key in and you turn it, it starts. You know, biggest things you got to worry about these cars is you change the oil. Uh, and timing belts, timing belts on the belted cars, those are very important because you, that's the Achilles heel. If that goes on you and you try to restart the car, you're going to frig up the entire uh, heads and all the valves and, and just it's going to be a very expensive fix as opposed to, you know, every 70, 80,000 miles, you know, when you do your water pump, just go ahead and switch that belt out and you got no problems. You usually get about 100,000 miles, but I say 80 to 85,000 is a good safe place to swap them depending on the kind of driving you do because it's cheap insurance. 
And I mean, like I said, every accord I've had prior to this one, I've gotten close to 200,000, if not more than 200,000. I mean, I had a 94 Legend, and that Legend, I got that thing up to about, I think, 250,000 miles, and that thing went through about eight drivers, new drivers in that car. It took somebody stealing it and stripping it in the Marcy Projects to kill that car. Uh, I had a 94 Integra, the green machine, man. That little four-door LS car, man, that thing was a beast. It uh, it took a Suburban to the nose, and I still got $600 for that car. <laughs> so you can't really go wrong as far as buying a Honda. I know a lot of people out there are going to hate this video. They're going to hate, you know, you got American muscle people that hate Hondas. But, you know, for a while there, there was a lot of people I know building race cars and they got to work every day in their Honda to pay for that race car. So there's something to be said about these cars. Now, getting back to this specific car, I mean, $247 a month. What does $247 a month get you with no money down? You get this nice red leather stitching, nice leather steering wheel with tons of functions again honda's going the route of uh toyota where they're trying to give even the base model vehicles and the lower end vehicles the amenities you need to drive safely with cell phones uh you get power on the lights the mirrors you get a nice sunglass holder lights you get a vanity mirror with lights. I mean, this is an entry-level car, one step up, and you got a vanity mirror with lights. I can't tell you how many entry-level cars I've driven, owned, gotten into that don't have lights on the vanity mirror. You've got this beautiful leather interior with heated leather seats, a sport mode. You've got paddle shifters here. These paddle shifters are very nice, you know? You got uh, intermittent wipers and auto lights. Basically anything you want from a brand new car under thirty thousand dollars. I mean, this car I got this car stickered out at twenty six seven or something like that. Twenty six seven ten, I believe, was the number. So for twenty six thousand seven hundred ten dollars, I mean, you got a car that's twice the size inside, basically, as the Civic. You've got airbags everywhere. You've got this nice fit and finish, and it's two hundred and forty seven dollars a month. Period. So. You know, when you talk about that stuff, this thing even has a backup camera. Check this out. You, you get what I'm saying to you? So these little things that come and add up all together really make a value package in this car that can't be beat, you know? And if you're in the market for something like this, you know, you should really look around. You should check and see what's out there because this is the Sport Special Edition model, which gives you leather everywhere. On the Sport... It just gives you, uh, you have a like a cloth material on the inserts here and on the doors. The Sport Special Edition gives you leather everywhere and on all the surfaces. So, I mean, that's really the major, major difference between a Sport Special Edition and, a, and an Accord Sport. Um, there may be one or two little things other than that, but not much. You know, they they, they, they basically give you the same thing, just the, the leather interior is nicer on the Sport Special Edition. Um... I'm particularly happy I got this model before the new model dropped because I'm not a big fan of turbo motors. I had a turbo twin turbo BMW X3 at 2014 and it was quick. The suspension was great. It was a fun to drive car, but turbo cars in my life for me personally have just been a big hassle. Whenever I deal with a turbo or, or deal with any other turbo kind of vehicles, the, the, it's just... It's never a good outcome for me, you know what I mean? I, I've always had cars that blow up, basically, with turbos. So, and that's one of the things that happened with my X3. You can see in one of my other videos, this thing was possessed. I mean, the electronic system, the car was held up at least three or four times at BMW because uh, electronic issues. It spent a month there for an overheating issue that they couldn't figure out for about a month. And it's just turbo cars, not a fan, you know? People that know turbo cars and people that can figure them out, I'm. They're, I know why they're fans of them because those vehicles, they get a lot of juice, a lot of power out of little motors and, you know, that's a definite upside to it. You know, once you master turbo tuning and having a turbo vehicle, that you can do a lot with a turbo vehicle. For me, the bigger thing I think is the inconsistencies in turbo cars. You know, it's it's just hard to continuously get the same kind of runs, the same kind of power out of them over and over unless you're really, really super used to them and, and you really get the, the, the way they run. 
Uh, I'm a more natural motor guy, and that's another thing about this Honda. It's got the naturally aspirated motor in it, which for me, I like. You hit the gas pedal, it goes. There's no spool up. There's no lag. There's no sudden burst of energy. You know, you get into about VTEC at about 3,500, 4,000 in this car. It's just enough to help you get on the highway. It's just enough to help you pass somebody. It's never going to blind speed you you're never going to have any torque steer in this car where that's where you hit the gas and the steering wheel pulls one way because of the power doesn't happen car drives great in the snow with the big wheels on it and uh it handles this big city in new york all day on top of the fact that uh you know you put about 25 30 dollars of gas regular unleaded gas in this car and it lasts you about two weeks of driving somewhere around four 450 miles so per tank so that's you know that's it's nice when you're talking about building a car that gets about eight or nine miles to the gallon. So I hope you this helps you understand the Honda Gini. Uh, I want to say a huge, tremendous thank you to Stunner Reese, uh, to the squad, to all the YouTube people that have liked and subscribed. I've been out here really grinding this about three or four weeks now. And I'm up to almost 300 subscribers. I've gotten several thousand views on some of my videos, and I'm just super humbled and super grateful to all that watch the videos, like and subscribe, comment. Uh, yeah, I'm open to uh, whatever you guys got to let me know about what I'm doing out here and what you'd like to see done better. And uh, let me know if there's any cars out there that you guys are interested in seeing. Uh, you know, I got I got a pretty good spectrum of places where I go to to get cars and get to review cars. Uh, I would say a good portion of the cars are my own vehicles that I have some time and experience with them. I have a vast, I've always been blessed to have a, a fleet of kind of regular cars. Never anything super or, you know, m major exotics, but always just some real solid everyday driving cars. So if you want to get some of that experience before you go out there and purchase a car, you had some questions about certain cars, just uh, shout me out, let me know, and I'll put them up on my uh, video here and uh, look for more future content to come. We got uh, some rims we're looking at for the uh, Demon Durango. Shout out to uh, shout out to Anarchy Wheels. They, are, they definitely have a dope social media network and they were real big on helping me get some rims set up possibly for the demon durango uh, that's coming in the future we're still in the works with that but shout out to anarchy wheels if you're out there looking for big dog wheels you should definitely give anarchy a shout on instagram uh big shout out to david newhouse at miami wheel depot also for getting back at me these are people that are serious about their business so you know hopefully the next couple of videos coming soon you should see some big changes on the demon durango we got some uh big uh, uh, upgrades coming down the chute. Uh, we got to get ready for a thousand subscribers because that's going to be a big one for us. And uh, bigger than that, I mean, now you know why we got the uh, cord out here. Now you know why the cars like the 300S exist in our fleet because these are cars that bring something else to the table that, that allow us to do other things. And instead of spending a hundred, 150,000 on just one Benz, we could have a Demon Durango. We could have a, a Core Special Sport Edition. We could have a, a Hemi 300 CS. We can have a 2018 Mustang convertible. We, you know, there's a lot of things that, that become possible when you diversify your monies over cars. And if you're a car addict like me, that's what I go for. You know, I'm not saying anybody's wrong for what they do, but for what I do, I like to experience as many vehicles as possible because you only live one life. You know, I don't really care if anybody's feeling my car or not. I know I'm feeling my car. And guess what? I'm the one that pays for it every month. So that's the most important thing. Be good, YouTube. Be safe and stay active out there, y'all.